money for infrastructure, housing, to combat the opioid crisis, and more. One thing I know for sure, these months of shutdown politics must come to an end. The President should sign this bill. We have a bipartisan proposal to accomplish goals. We haven't seen the fine print yet. The parameters are good. And so, bottom line, very simple, again, everything takes give and take. And anyone who says, unless I get all my way, no way, is doing a real disservice to the American people. Senator Leahy. Thank you, Leader. I, um, my first term in the Senate, I joined the Appropriations Committee. I was struck by the fact that it was a committee where Republicans and Democrats tended to work together. I uh, tried to find what's best for the country. And I've seen over the years where that and some other committees has moved away from that, which is a shame. We determined on this, uh, as we did last year in passing out virtually unanimously all the appropriations bills, we showed the Republicans and Democrats could work together. I think no one expected something as irresponsible as the government shutdown, which has cost the American taxpayers over $10 billion, gained nothing by it, uh, has made people unable to pay their rent, their doctor's bills, their hospital's bills, lose their cars, uh, have devastation at home. We definitely don't want to do that again. So the last uh, several weeks, we have worked quietly, Republicans and Democrats together. Uh, this past weekend, as the negotiations went on, I had a feeling we could reach somewhere. Uh, last night, we began the meeting of uh, Senator Shelby, myself, uh, the chair, uh, Congresswoman Lowy, a uh, ranking member, Congresswoman Granger, in the uh, Senate uh, Appropriations Committee, and then moved for t uh, two or three more hours of negotiations in my capital office just down this hall. Everybody had to give something. But what we wanted was the American people to come out. And we do have very good uh, security. We believe in strong border security. But we want realism, not rhetoric. Uh, a wall that will eventually be paid for by Mexico, of course, is not something that's going to happen, and everybody knows that, no matter how much uh, the president said that. But when things do work, having ability to inspect trucks coming through, uh, where most of the drugs and contraband come from, uh, doing the technology that our own Border Patrol tell us they need more than uh, walls, they'll do that. In places where fencing or walls may work, we got the money for that. We put together a good package. And remember, there are six other bills involved, everything from opioids uh, to, uh, you know, paying for veterans' care on through. Let's be grown-ups in both parties. Let's get them passed. Senator Durbin. <clears throat> Thanks, uh, Chuck. For 35 days, we said to the President the following. If you will put an end to this government shutdown, we will sit down at a table and negotiate this issue. We kept our word. As soon as the President lifted his shutdown, we sat down for serious bipartisan negotiation. It reflected the reality of the moment. So many spending bills hanging in suspense, the prospect of another shutdown, and the reality of Congress, a divided Congress, with a Democratic House and a Republican Senate. We went forward realizing that under those circumstances, neither side would get everything that they wished. We have a compromise. There are parts of it that I'm not happy with. I wish we'd been able to achieve more, but that's what happens when you sit down and do a bipartisan compromise. Let me tell you the elements that I am proud of. First, the fact that Democrats made it clear from the start that we believe in border security, and we talked about the needs of technology on the border. 
America knows we're facing the worst drug crisis in our history. We know that over 90% of the narcotics coming in from Mexico come through ports of entry. We said from the beginning, bring the technology, the scanners, the x-ray machines that will stop or at least slow down the flow of these narcotics. And we have included it in this compromise agreement. This is a proposal starting with the Democrats embraced by the Republicans, which is real border security to address a real threat to America in the drug crisis we face today. The second thing that we insisted on and worked with the administration on was humanitarian assistance. Sadly, two little children came to our border and died before they could receive the medical assistance they needed. As one person said to the administration, that hadn't happened in 10 years. We don't want it to ever happen again. So there's money in this compromise for humanitarian assistance, such as medical supervision for those who do come to our border to make sure they are treated in a humane way. Let me close by saying this. President Trump's statement at the State of the Union address relative to immigration and those who are immigrants to this country, sadly, was a fear-mongering, hate-mongering approach to uh, the people who come to this border, many of whom are just seeking a better life, as many of our ancestors did before us, many of whom are not trying to violate the American legal system. They're trying to see if there's an opening in that system for them to become part of America. Most are turned away, but they come here in search of this country as our fathers and grandfathers did before us. We need to recast this conversation when it comes to immigration, to recognize that the president's approach, the Steve Miller approach, does not represent the best of America. It represents the kind of division that does not bring us together as a nation and does not acknowledge the heritage which makes us one of the greatest nations in the world today. Senator Tester. Uh, thank you, Leader Schumer. I think what we have seen happen over the past 12 days or so is uh, Republicans and Democrats coming together and both the House and the Senate coming together and passing a significant step forward on border security. It's a lot of been talked about in a negotiated process and compromise, and that's a fact. We've ended up with something that I think can pass the House and pass the Senate, and something the President should pass that deals with border security, humanitarian aid, making sure we have the technology, the manpower at our ports to be able to make sure this country is secure. I would tell you that this is a reason to celebrate, but the fact is, is that Finally, for the first time in a while, Congress has done its job. And we've reached compromise to, pu to push this country forward. Now, we need to get it passed through the House and the Senate, and the President needs to do his job and sign the bill. Thank you. Okay, questions, yes. Um, one question that long said that additional barriers along the southern border are unnecessary. What makes it necessary now? This is the exact same thing we asked for when Leader Pelosi and I, then Leader Pelosi and I, went into the White House on December 11th. 1.375 for fencing and other types of barriers with the same language we had in 2018 and 17, which says only technologies that have been used before can be used again. We've always been for fencing, but this doesn't allow for a concrete wall of any kind. Mr. Schumer, the president says he's unhappy with the bill, but he's adding to it. What's your understanding of what he means by that? We don't know what he means by that, but the one thing we all feel for sure in this, I agree with Leader McConnell, he ought to sign the bill, not cause a government shutdown. Uh, can he, there are great limits on what he can do and cannot do, and we'll have to see what he means. Senator Schumer, do recent comments from freshman Democrat Congresswoman Ilhan Omar represent a growing change in the Democrat Party's historically pro-Israel state? I don't believe so. Every single senator, every single one opposes uh, uh, BDS and her remarks were reprehensible, condemned uh, by the, the, the vast expanse of the Democratic Party, and she correctly apologized. Back to the question about the appropriations. We hear a lot about transfer authority, but is there a limit on what you think is acceptable to the president to put well, money around without a congressional blessing, and if that starts to eat into other priorities? Other well, he'll have to determine if he wants to try to move it around, whether he wants to take back on Coast Guard cutters or FEMA or something like that. He can't raise the caps. And as for moving around the money, he needs congressional 
congressional permission to do it. It was done in the past by President Obama and President Trump, but they controlled, the Republicans controlled the House and gave him the okay. He doesn't have the authority to do it without House uh, permission. And he, I don't believe you can talk to Chairman uh, Roy Ball, uh, uh, Lucille Roy Ballard, and I don't think she has said she wouldn't give him that permission. Yes. Senator Portman has a bipartisan bill with Senator Feinstein that would help Congress take that power to prevent uh, tariffs on autos. And Senator Cheney has a bipartisan bill with Senator Warner, similar lines. Do you think either of these or some combination of them is a good issue? Well, I, I don't know. I have to study those bills. I can tell you this, that the President's tentative agreement with Mexico and Canada um, lacks enforcement authority on both labor and environment, and unless it gets that enforcement authority, he's going to tr have trouble getting a lot of Democrats to vote for it. Last one. Um, Senator McConnell said a few moments ago that he plans to bring up the Green New Deal resolution for the vote. What's your reaction? Please? My reaction is the first question Republicans should answer is, what is their answer on climate change? What are they going to put forward? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone, we heard from Republicans, we heard from Democrats about this budget deal that they are hoping President Trump will decide is a good compromise to keep the government open past that February 15th deadline. But now we are going to go back to Governor Gavin Newsom's first state of the state in California.